Hello there, my brothers and sisters in Christ. I pray that you all are doing well by the willpower and peace and grace and mercy of our God, Jehovah, through his beloved Son, our Messiah, our King, Jesus Christ, and through the Holy Ghost with power to comfort you all and to lead and keep you all in his truths to the very end. Brothers and sisters, in this uh, studies or in this video, I wanted to go over the detecting and the identification on how to identify the spirit of Antichrist, especially in these last days. Many of you already know, but there's some that will end up falling on this video and actually have that spirit. The thing is, in these last days, we deal with a lot of deception. We deal with a lot, a lot of deception where men and women believe in falsehood that they're truly Christians, that they're truly right with God, okay, that they truly have the Holy Ghost when in actuality they have a different spirit, but that spirit is not holy, okay. We live in a time where the deception is grand, for if you look up the statistics, it is stated that Christianity make up the population of a billion. And I said to myself, that is a lie. Christianity, a billion? I, I said to myself, that's false converts. False converts make up a billion, not true Christianity. When I mean true, I mean true body of Christ. True people who are filled with the Holy Ghost in power. That's not a billion in this world. For if, if, if the if the people who profess themselves to be Christian make up a billion and all those billions truly had the Holy Spirit abided within them, we wouldn't be living in the last days as we're living in the last days. And I mean with, with sins rising, okay? With lawlessness increasing, with deception increasing. If there were truly billions of Christians that truly was filled with the Holy Ghost. What we're dealing with in the last days, as I said, false converts and the false gospel, a false gospel, many false gospels are being preached, but not the truth. This is what we're dealing with. So let's let's uh, begin with the studies. Um, we'll be in first John chapter four, verse one through five. And as we go through these verses, you will need to really check yourself. I'm not speaking about everyone, but I'm pretty sure there will be many that will follow on this video and they themselves truly have that spirit of Antichrist because they have believed the false gospel and have turned aside from the original, the true gospel that was preached by Jesus Christ himself and John the Baptist and Apostle Paul. Beloved, John says, Beloved, Believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are going out into the world. Okay, so these false prophets are actually false teachers. When he's speaking about false prophets in these last days, John calls them false prophets, but these people do not see themselves as prophets or prophetists because we see in these last days for someone to claim themselves as a prophet or a prophetess they would see that that was too high of a standard to call themselves so they may call themselves brother so-and-so or sister so-and-so and with calling themselves brother so-and-so or sister so-and-so or they may just say oh yeah i'm a christian or i'm a born again or i've been um living in christianity or i've been born again for x amount of years or whatever whatever and they will still go about teaching doctrines that are false they themselves are classified as false prophets john calls us to <clears throat> not to believe but to test not to believe but to test if you believe without testing you yourself are subject to this falsehood and believing in this falsehood beloved believe not every spirit 
but tribal spirits, whether they come from God. Okay, and we know that God is not a liar. We know that God is not a deceiver. We know that God that God does not uh, uh, preach anything that is in confusion. Okay, but these false teachers, false congregation, false saints, false prophets have gone out not being filled with the Holy Ghost to preach the truth, but have gone to teach according to their own desires, according to their own hearts. And we know that the heart itself is desperately wicked. All right. Like I said, in these last days, the majority of men and women who profess themselves to be Christians are not biblical Christians, but they have believed in a false gospel Another gospel in which Apostle Paul stated, if anyone come preaching another gospel, let them forever be accursed. Okay, these are cursed individuals who are not truly converted. Now, John in verse two has uh, warned us or showed us how to test the truth. He said, verse two, in verse two, hereby know you the spirit of God, basically the Holy Spirit. Hereby know you the spirit of God, which is the Holy Spirit. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is coming the flesh is of God. Now, when he's speaking of this, He's not speaking of just confession out of your mouth. Okay. For he just said in verse one, in verse one, that believe not every spirit, but try the spirits. Verse two, know you the spirit, the Holy Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is coming to flesh is of God. So he's so the thing is when someone confesses that they are a Christian, when someone confesses that they are born again, when they confess that they are of God or of Jesus, we back we have to test their works. We have to test how they carry themselves. How do they speak? How do they walk? That is what we're testing. Their works, their actions, their deeds, how they carry themselves, how they live their life in this world is what truly is the confession to show us whether in their life that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. And there's other verses that I'm on, I want to share with you to back that up. Okay, let's go to verse three and then we'll go into other chat uh, verses. Verse three says, and every spirit that confesses not that Jesus is come in the flesh is not of God. Okay, again, we're dealing with the works. We're dealing with the actions. We're dealing with how do they live their lives? Are they of the world or are they of are, are or are they not of the world? Okay, and the spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof you have heard that it should come. Okay, when it said that it shall come, this is basically the result of the falling away. Okay. The result of the falling away, which is which brings about that Antichrist spirit. And it says, and even now is in the world. Okay, let's go into other verses, which I, it will show you that when it comes to confess, confession, it's actually that confession is by one's works, which justifies or does not justify whether Jesus Christ is coming to flesh. We're going to be... Uh, in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2. Okay, since John said, test the spirits. So we're dealing with either the uh, 
demonic spirits, evil spirits, unclean spirits, the spirits of Satan, or we're dealing with the spirit of our Father, the Holy Spirit, the spirit of Christ, the spirit of Jehovah. Okay, Ephesians uh, chapter 2, verse 2. It says, where in, where in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience. Okay. So we are told that we ourselves, when we lived in our sins, had this spirit and there's many of those who profess themselves to be Christians have still have that spirit this is why John called us to try it try that spirit because there's many that say I'm a Christian I'm a believer I'm born again yet there is that spirit that is working in them, which is not the spirit of God, but the spirit of the prince of the air, which is the devil. Okay. Which is the devil. So we have that spirit. Then we have another spirit in Philippians chapter 2, verse 12 through, well, verse 12. I don't know why I said 12 to 12. I believe it's 12 to 13. Okay. It says, Wherefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as my present, not in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Okay, so we have two separate spirits. We have the spirit of the devil in Ephesians that work. Okay, the spirit. The spirit that work. Okay, in children, in the people of disobedience. And then we have the spirit, which is of God. For we know God is a spirit that also works okay in those that at obey and that is to do to will and to do of his good pleasures so god the spirit works in us through his holy spirit to will and to do of his good pleasures all right satan also works in the children of disobedience to will and to do of his own wicked pleasures. Okay. We also um, have second Corinthians chapter six, verse 16. What agreement hath the temple of God with idols for you are the temple of the living God. As God had said, I will dwell in them and walk. Okay. This walking is also working. Let's say that too. Hold on. Okay. I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. I will dwell in them and work in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. This can also be seen if we speak about the devil. The devil very well is a spirit. He has demonic and unclean spirits as well, which dwell in the children of disobedience as that same spirit dwelt in me when I lived in my sins. In which he can also say he will walk and he will work in a uh, people of disobedience and he will be their God and they shall be his people. For we know that there is wheat and tear Okay, so we go back to this verse. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are going out into the world. Hereby 
Know you the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is coming in the flesh is of God. Every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is coming in the flesh is not of God. This is the spirit of Antichrist. Now we're going to go in scriptures where we will know more in depth of why it says this every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is coming in the flesh. Okay. Here it goes. It's first John chapter three. But behold, what manner of love the Father had bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now we are the sons of God, and it doeth not yet appear that we should what we should be but we know that when he shall appear which is christ when christ shall appear we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is every man that hath this hope in him purified himself okay even as he is pure in order for one to purify themselves it is the spirit that works in them to do that. Okay, either that spirit in them works in there to purify them as Christ is pure, or that spirit is working against them. Okay, to keep them in defilement and to make them more defiled. All right, verse four, whosoever committed sin transgresses also the law. For sin is the transgression of law. And here we go here. And now you know that he, which meaning Christ, was manifest. Wish I had a highlighter. I'm just going to leave it as that. He was manifest to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. Remember that, okay? He, Christ was manifest to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. So we go back to 1 John. It says, every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. So by Jesus Christ coming into the flesh... This is him being made manifest. So by Jesus Christ coming into the flesh, him being made manifest was to take away sin. Okay. And then we drop down to verse eight. This is all about testing the spirit that says that they are Christians or believers. He that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, for this purpose, the Son of God was manifest, having come in the flesh, that he, which is Christ, might destroy, okay, the works of the devil let's read and understand that again he that committed sin is of the devil okay when it says committed sin this is habitually no conviction no desire to repent but sin that one may very well have accepted and have no desires to change no desires to repent it says that that individual, man or woman, is of the devil in relation to the devil. The, the devil is their father. Because it says, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. And for this purpose, 
the Son of God, Christ, was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. So Jesus Christ was manifest to destroy the actions of the devil that works in the children of disobedience. Okay? For again, as it says in Ephesians, we're in time past you, us, we walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that work in the children of disobedience. Well, we know that Christ was made manifest to destroy that work. Okay. To destroy that work in the children of disobedience. Okay. But the thing is, we live in the last days where false prophets, teachers, pastors, congregation have risen up professing themselves to be believers out of their mouths, but in their actions, in their works, in their deeds, their deeds and their works and their actions do not confess that Jesus Christ has destroyed the works of the devil within them. Okay, this goes to one that lives in habitual sin. For if one professes, the thing is you test. If I say to you, I'm a Christian, I'm a believer. You, it is called in scriptures, you are commanded not to believe me. But you are commanded to test that spirit. Okay, that lives in me by my works, by my actions, by my deeds. How do I speak? How do I carry myself? What does my whole life consist of being in this world? You are to test that. Okay. If my actions, my deeds, my works, my ways, what comes out of my mouth, my mindset does not testify. If it does not confess that Jesus Christ himself, that spirit. Does that spirit. That destroys the work of the devil. Does it live in me? And you can tell if the spirit of God that destroys the works of the devil lives in me, you will see that my works is the same works of Christ. If I profess myself to be a Christian, the spirit that lives in me is supposed to be the spirit of God. And that spirit of God that lives in me destroys the works of the devil. Okay, destroys the works of the devil. And what does he do? His spirit works in me now. To both will and do what God wants me to do. No longer what the devil wants me to do. Okay, I hope you all understand that. For if it is the other way around, it is said unto us, then that spirit is the spirit of Antichrist. And we know what Antichrist is, is opposition. Opposition to holiness. Opposition to obedience. Opposition to denying oneself. Opposition to being separate from the world. Opposition to righteousness. Opposition to taking up one cross, one's cross, crucifying one's affection and desires. Opposition to completely, wholeheartedly following Jesus Christ. Opposition. It's a spirit of opposition. Even though one professes themselves to be Christian, quote unquote, we are called don't believe. 
Don't trust. Don't cling. Don't hold on to that. Examine their life. As Jesus Christ said, judge the tree by its fruit. Okay. Verse 4. <clears throat> it is said, you are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Okay. Who have you overcome? False prophet. Because in these last days, these false teachers, congregations, pastors, deacons, bishops, they're not calling us to live in holiness. They're not calling us to deny ourselves. They're not calling us to crucify our affections and our lusts by the motions of sin. They're not calling us to obey and follow Jesus Christ wholeheartedly and truthfully. But what has gone out in these last days is a preaching of a false doctrine, a false gospel. These are people that are cursed, who profess themselves to be believers, but have denied the power of the Holy Ghost to destroy the works of Satan, the works of the devil within them. That is the spirit of Antichrist in these last days. But verse 4, as I says, you are of little children, you have overcome them. Because, why? That spirit that abideth in you. Greater is he that is in you. That he that is in you is that that destroys the works of Satan. And that's that spirit that confesses, yes, I have come to destroy the works of the devil. I confess that. Jesus Christ has come in the flesh and this is why I'm here because the simple fact that we know the only reason we have the Holy Ghost is because the Son of God came and manifested. There's no way that the Holy Ghost would have come before the Messiah had been revealed and made manifest. It's not that the Holy Spirit comes first and then the Messiah is the Messiah and then men are given the Holy Ghost. For as John the Baptist says, he said, I baptize with water, but there's someone that's coming after me that is greater who will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. OK, so it's the simple fact that that confession is the spirit within them that's confessing. The Holy Spirit is confessing that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh because it is the Holy Spirit that destroys the work of the devil. Greater is he that is in you that's destroying the works of the devil that we may live holy for God. That God may walk in us and do of his good pleasures through his son. That Jesus Christ himself may live in us. That the Holy Spirit may dwell in us because we are not of our own. We are his temple. Greater is he that is in us that is doing these things than he that is in this world, which is the devil who worketh in the children of disobedience, destroying them. Because that spirit within that individual, we see that there's no confession. That the spirit that is supposed to be in them to destroy the works of the devil is not present. So for it not to be present, that is the spirit of Antichrist. It's in opposition to holiness. It says, verse 5, they are of the world. Therefore, speak they of the world, and the world hears them. That is true. These false prophets are of the world. The world hears them. The world believes them. Them that believe us to call men to deny yourself, to crucify your desires and your lust upon the cross, to follow after Jesus Christ, to be crucified unto the world, to be separate from the world. Those who are of God and believe these things, not only do they hear us and believe us, they actually do it. 
many this stuff is hitting many of us it's hitting it's hitting home for what the lord says King James Version, Luke chapter 6, 46. Why call you me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? So for one to call Christ Lord, Lord, verbally they're confessing. You are my Lord. I am a Christian. Jesus is basically saying, you call me your Lord and you say you're a Christian? Then why don't you do Okay, that do is work. Why don't you work out the things I command you to if I'm supposed to be your Lord? For Lord means master. If Christ is my master and I profess myself to be a Christian, and Christian is what? The society of Christ. We are the origin of Christ. We sprout out from the from the uh, from the name of Christ. Salvation, anointing. Christ is scratching his head. Okay, you call me Lord. You said I'm your God. You praise me and do all of these things. Why don't you obey me? Why don't you do what I tell you to do? It's a question mark. Why? Because that is the spirit of Antichrist. Because they don't. There's other verses, Matthew chapter 7, verse 22 to 23. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? And in your name have cast out devils, and in your name have done many wonderful works. Verse 23. And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me. You that work, okay? It's all about that action. That's the confession. You that work iniquity. For you that work iniquity, spirit of Antichrist. You that work in opposition to holiness. You that work in opposition to denying your fleshly self. Not desiring to be separate from the world. You could very well prophesy. Because that's a confession out of your mouth. But what is your works, your deeds, your ways? It speaks in opposition to what you truly confess out of your mouth. Okay, there's another uh, chapter and verse. Second Peter chapter 2. Let's see if I can highlight this. Yep. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you. Okay, these false teachers, the thing is, as scriptures say, these people so eagerly want to teach, but they don't know what they're talking about. And neither, uh, neither do they have any idea where do they affirm what they're talking about. That's what makes them false. Because a lot of what they say as false teachers it's not that many of them go out to purposely deceive you. The thing is, they're disobedient, period. Their hearts are still seeking to hold on to their flesh all the while being godly. And when they, when, when they read scriptures, they're not given the full understanding of what the scriptures is truly saying. You have to have a spiritual understanding of what the scriptures are truly saying. So without that understanding, they preach something in which they do not understand. If you, under, if you get what I'm talking about. Even as there shall be false teachers among you who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord. Okay? 
when there come when it says denying the Lord, is it a denial verbally? No, it's not a denying verbally. It's not saying out of their mouth that Jesus Christ is not the son of God. It's denying him in their actions. In their deeds. In their walk, in their way. For we are called to deny ourselves, take up our cross and follow after Christ. We are to live a life that the spirit of Christ may dwell in us and to live in us. When we deny Christ, we, we basically do not allow him to live his life in us. If you get what I'm talking about, we're denying our God. We're denying Jehovah to live how he wants to live in us. Just as it says here. It says, hold on. For it is God which work in you both to do, both to will and to do of his good pleasures. Then it says, God said, I will dwell in them. Okay. God, the spirit who has not a body, he said, I will dwell in them and walk work in them so for us to continue for us to oppose God and his righteousness and his holiness we're denying him we're pushing him we're resisting him from living how he in his holiness wants to live in our physical body so for Christ being holy and righteous and pure, that spirit of him wants to live in our vessel, to live like that in our vessel. But if we're wanting to go out and curse, that's not him. So you're denying him because that's not what he does. If we're wanting to go and fornicate, that's not him. So you're denying him. You're basically putting yourself above him. And say, no, Lord, I don't want your purity. I don't want your holiness. Let me do me, please. This is where it comes to denying. Okay. Even denying him, you're not letting him live in you as he wants to live in you. Let me find another verse so you can better understand that. Second Timothy. This know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. All right. And from verse two through verse five, they're not talking about the world. They're talking about professing believers. Okay. This is how we see that another gospel has been preached. These are all actions. This is why John says, test every spirit. Don't take one's word for it. Their spirit that lives in them, their action, their deeds tells you what spirit they are of, whether they are of God or whether they are of the devil. OK, for as we go through these, you have to ask yourself, are these the traits and characteristics of Jesus Christ? It says for men, when it says men, we ain't talking about the world. You might well say for Christian, for Christian men, for Christian women. For Christian men and Christian women shall be lovers of their own selves. That's not Jesus. Covetous. That's not Jesus. Bolsters and proud. Blasphemers. Disobedient to parents. Unthankful. Unholy. These are the people that you can find in the churches. Verse 3. Without natural affection. Truth breakers. False accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. We're talking about Christians, quote unquote. Traitors, heady, high minded, lovers of pleasure. We see lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. The world does not believe in God, our God. 
they're talking about Christians. Lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Okay? Verse 5. Having the form of godliness. Professing Christians now. Having a form of godliness, but you have denied the spirit of your father to live his holiness and his righteousness in you. We are not of our own. We were bought with a price. The spirit of our father desires to live in us, to walk in us as he please. But we, because of our flesh, and those that have come about preaching a different gospel have opposed him in our flesh. This is the denial. You deny the power. That power is the Holy Ghost to change you, to destroy the works of the devil. There's also another verse why, is it, why it is important for us to continue to live in holiness and truth. For as we live in holiness and truth, our lives is a testimony to the world that God has truly sent Jesus Christ. Just by our lives, our life is a confession on its own. Even if we don't verbally say that we are Christians, by our lives, we are the open Bible. Speaking to the world by our actions and deeds. Um, this is John 17. Yeah, John 17, verse 17. We're going to start off. Okay, and when we... Do not live the way Christ called us to live. We brace, This is an opposition against God. We are fighting God. We are his enemies. Okay. We have denied, again, like I say, God's true self in his spirit, desiring to live in us. Okay. It's as, it's as um, the father made manifest in his son and every attribute and characteristic and traits of Jesus Christ that this is that the disciples seen is the characteristics, the traits, uh, the ways of God himself. And as Jesus said, I have not come to do my will, but the will of the father. OK, this is how we ought to be as well, that the father may truly live in us to his fullness and that he may not be restricted uh, by our own fleshly desires and our own will. Verse 17, sanctify them through thy truth. This is Jesus praying to the Father for the disciples and also for those who will believe in the gospel after um, the disciples has preached it. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. That they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in you that they also may be one in us, that the world, okay? Do you see this? This is a testimony unto the world. So that the world may believe that thou sent me, okay? This is why I said, if we do not live the way God and Christ has called us to live, following after the Holy Spirit, we have denied him. Not in mouth, not in word, but in our actions and our deeds. Verse 22, and the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them that they may be one, even as we are one. Okay. One in holiness, one in truth, one in righteousness, 
one in purity. Everything that God is and his traits and his attributes, we ought to be, for we are his children. We are his offspring. We ought to look like him in the spirit. Christ being the firstborn, the big brother, we ought to look like them. Okay. Verse 23, I in them and you in me, that they may be perfect in one. Okay. Again, that, oh, that the world may know that thou had sent me and had loved them as thou has loved me. All right. I wanted to share this with you all, my brothers and sisters in Christ. So this would be something that you yourself would have to look in. Look at yourself. Are you believing a false gospel? Or are you holding on to the true gospel? And that is that Jesus Christ has come into the flesh to destroy the works of sin in your life. You don't continuing, you don't continue in habitual sin. The smoking, the fornicating, the lying, the deception, the, the, the theft, the pornography, the masturbation, the practicing homosexuality, all of that nonsense need to stop. Everyone that nameth the name of Christ should depart from evil. As it says in verse 2, whosoever committed sin, this is habitual sin, transgresseth the law. For sin is the transgression of law. And you know that Christ was manifest to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. So, whosoever abide in Christ does not sin. And whosoever sins, this is habitually, hath not seen him, does not know him. And it says again, and this is how we are to look at a person's life, that they profess themselves to be a Christian. Verse 7, little children, let no man deceive you. We have to hold on to the word of God and not the word of people. For people will give themselves, they will give you excuses for why they are doing this and why they're doing that. I met one man who professed himself to be a believer all the while smoking a black and mouth. I said, wait a minute. He sought to deceive me, to persuade me that it was okay that he, that it was okay that he smoked a black and mouth all the while professing himself to be a believer, all the while quoting scriptures in my face. But, but the scripture says, let no man deceive you. Don't let them lie to you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous. Even as Christ, even as he is righteous. Verse 8, he that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. So Jesus Christ is manifest to destroy smokers, uh, habitual smokers, habitual fornicators, uh, those that live in habitual um, uh, lies, deceptions. The works of the flesh, all manners, even if I haven't even named it, everything that's contrary to sound doctrine. Jesus Christ has come to destroy them all that we may truly live just as Jehovah. Whosoever is born of God, which act, which that means has the Holy Ghost, doeth not commit sin. Why? Because we are justified. We don't uh, commit habitual sin. We may fall. Trust. We may fall. But to habitually live in it? No. Why? For his seed remains in him. The spirit of God remains in him. So the child of God cannot habitually sin. They may sin. But the spirit that abides in them convicts them to where they come to repentance. The spirit of God washes them clean and they continue in their righteousness, justified grace. 
And it says, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. Verse 10. This is our whole studies. Verse 10. In this, the children of God are manifest. And the children of the devil, the spirit of Antichrist, whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God. Neither he that loveth his brother. That's another um, video that I definitely want to put out. The loving the brother for the sake that um, in these last days people are calling for love, love, love. But they're not talking about this love, this true love, which is of God. Again. Be beloved. Believe not every spirit. We got to test them whether they are the spirit of the devil or the spirit of God. Don't trust it. Don't believe it. Don't hold on to it. But try the spirits. Try their actions, their deeds, their, their ways, how they carry themselves. What comes out of their, their mouths when they speak? Okay. One professes themselves to be a Christians, Christian Christian. What is their whole mindset? What is all in their mind? What is all in their heart? Could you see Christ speaking in a way that, that they speak? Is it holy? Is it righteous? If they spoke in the presence of God as they're speaking to whomever, would God approve? Okay. The simple fact, again, while we have to test it, because people who profess themselves as being of God are false, preaching falsely, not being filled with the Holy Ghost in truth, but are looking to please men in their preaching. They're looking to take their money in their preaching. They're making sure that they're leaving a lot of things that they should be saying to the congregation for the sake of tidings, tithings. They're not wanting to lose anyone in their congregation. So they did not fully speak the truth, but tell people what they want to hear. These are the type of people that have gone out into the world. And this is why we have in these last days, false converts. We have such an, uh, an epidemic of iniquity in the churches. The Holy Spirit is not in these churches because this false gospel has gone out. This is why we ought to test the body of Christ. The true believers is a great minority. It's hard to find without the Internet. It's hard to find one who truly has the spirit of God and, and, is, and is actually walking and following after the Holy Ghost. For when they say there's a there's billions, Christianity make up a, a statistic of a billion. I said, no, the Antichrist spirit makes up that billion. For uh, these billion, if they truly have the Holy Spirit, there wouldn't be as much lawlessness in the world as it is today. There wouldn't be increase in plagues and famine and wars. And it's the religions that are truly behind these wars. And these are the people that profess themselves to be Christian. No, that's that Antichrist spirit. That is an opposition to allowing God and Jesus Christ to live and to walk in them. They are opposing God. So that spirit that lives in them, that they're welcoming and that they love is the spirit of the devil. But we have overcome them. We are not deceived by their tactics, by their lack of understanding scriptures, by their lack of desire to submit unto God wholeheartedly to allow Jesus Christ himself to live in us, to speak in us, to do his will in us. If this is a conviction to yourself, you're living in habitual sin yourself, 
You need to seek the Lord in repentance. To subject yourself wholeheartedly unto the Lord. That Christ himself may dwell in you. That God himself may dwell in you. And not to be restricted by you. Not to be resisted by you. Not to be opposed by your flesh. Because you and your flesh want to do your own thing. Thought I'd go over the studies with you all. My brothers and sisters in Christ. And y'all take care.